This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. What exercise should I do? Because you have to run at least three miles a day. Okay, you have to run three miles a day. So he, he uh, calls the doctor uh, 30 days later. He said, We like to see things that are a whole picture. But every single day starts a new day and there's a new cheshmer. And the Yemen says every single day is a new cheshmer. We wake up in the morning, and the first thing that we do is we say, Besides the fact that we're thanking Hashem for the mere fact that we woke up, we're, we're thanking Hashem that He gave us a new day. And the fact that the Rabbani Shem returned out on the Shama shows that the Rabbani Shem is willing to start to some degree to start a fresh start. Adam Nidain B'chol according to one mandam, according to one opinion. I said this marshal before, a story actually, that it was, uh, it was actually told to me by someone whose grandmother is a principal in a school. And this was a school where the, the uh, let's say the sixth grade We'll change some information here to protect the innocent. But uh, the sixth grade was very challenging the year before. They sent a couple of teachers flying. And uh, the first day in the seventh grade, usually the first day the kids are still nice, it's still Sheva Brachis, it's still Shana and Shana. But the first day already the, kid, the teacher wanted to, uh, to retire, even before recess. So the principal lined them all up, dismissed all the other classes, and said, this class is not going to get dismissed. And she read them the riot act. She said, under no circumstances is there going to be any tolerating of this kind of behavior. And as she's talking to them, a knapsack goes flying, <laughs> full of books. And it misses the teacher by a hair breath. <laughs> Nachamazel almost doesn't count. So the other teacher said, you see, you see from here that it's not going to work. You see from here that... And, uh, the principal decided that it's not Kedai to react with an anger. She's going to wait, wait it out. And the principal waited it out. And the next day the teachers came in and said, what's going to be, what's going to be, you know? We'll see. What's going to be? You have to investigate. Let's check the cameras. Let's check fingerprints. Let's figure, figure out. All the books didn't have any names on it yet. I guess uh, she anticipated uh, that she was going to use this as a uh, pass. <coughs> so the teacher said, look, Sooner or later, this, this kid is going to have to come, the principal said, sooner or later, this kid is going to have to come to pick up the knapsack. Because how she's going to go over to the, her father and say, I need another $300 for books. What happened to your first books? No, somebody threw it at the principal. You know, it's not going to sound very good. So we'll wait. So they waited one day, and the other teacher says, Kenish Vaito, Onganazai. They waited a second day. Finally, after day number three, um, shows up. Day number three, the teacher showed, you know, the, the kid shows up, is knocking on the door, sittering, mamish sittering, crying. <coughs> yes. Um, 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 you're what? Um, you're what? It's my books. Oh, it's your books. Uh-huh. Okay. <coughs> and this, this girl is all the colors of the rainbow. She gives it back the thing. Why'd you punish her? I didn't have to punish her. But she had to acknowledge that's her books. That was it. Trust me. She is not going to make trouble again. And kachav. Now, this thing, we wake up in the morning and we're so embarrassed about what we did yesterday, but what we didn't do yesterday. And we say to the Rabbi Shalom, you know what? It's me. This is who I am. I want to pick up the pieces from here. And the Rabbi Shalom says, you're willing to come to terms with who you are? Okay. Then things are going to be different. And things don't necessarily have to be the same way. And that, uh, there was a person that said to his, uh, to his wife, it was a very big Amma Oretz, the night of the Seder. So he said, go to the neighbor. I see how you do a Seder. I don't have a clue what to do. So she didn't want to go. He insisted she should go. 
So he went to the neighbor. The only problem was the neighbor was as big as uh, was even a bigger Amma Eretz than he was. And the neighbor was in the middle of having a machloikis l'shem shemayim with his wife. Presume it was l'shem shemayim because he was holding a big pot and she was holding a rolling pin. They're really going at each other. And they're threatening and screaming. She goes running away. She comes back to her husband. She sits down. And her husband says to her, so what did you see? She's not saying. What do you do by the Seder? I'm not telling you. So her husband gets so angry, he picks up a pot. And she says, put that pot down. He picks up the pot. Tell me what you're supposed to do by the Seder. She picks up a rolling pin. Tell me what you're supposed to do. She goes, you know what you're supposed to do. So what are you sending me for? You see you know what you're supposed to do by the Seder. Just to give equal time. Another story is that. The man, he's under the table, and the wife is screaming, get out, get out from there right now, get out from there right now. And he screams from under the table, do benich balabos, do es temenich logavos sitin. You know, here I'm balabos, don't, don't tell me what to do over here. The emiss is, that what is the Indian of the Seder? The Indian of the Seder is we follow instructions. We, 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 you know, Jews don't like following instructions so much. Never Jews read instructions book, they never read the instructions book. Tell them. We build a swarm shack. They never read the instruction. <coughs> you all gonna tell me I should put in this screw first? Yeah, how it's uh, how it's it? Guys put in the guy came to put in my microwave. He put it in backwards. And so he calls up ten friends of his to figure out what's wrong. Trying to show him the instruction, but bah! he doesn't need the instruction. That's why it's backwards. We don't like following instructions. So the whole idea that we come to a seder night and there's a seder, that's a certain bittle. And the bittel is the whole Indian of Pesach. Rabbi Yisham, this is who I am. I don't know what's going to be, but this is who I am. Paroi said, Hoban is chak moloi. Paroi is going to outsmart the Jews. How did Paroi outsmart the Jews? He's going to make sure the Moshe Rabbeinu is not born. How is he going to make sure the Moshe Rabbeinu is not born? By allowing all of the babies to drown. Oh. That's how he's going to make sure Moshe Rabbeinu is not born. What happens at the end? His own daughter saves Moshe Rabbeinu, and he raises him in his own palace. You try to be too smart, the Rabbi Shem says, I don't need an outsider to undo your plans. You yourself will undo your plans. But we are our worst enemies. So, Kumtais, if the whole Yisoyed of Kalifas Mitzrayim is Hoven Ischak Malay, so what is the Merubah Mida Taiva? What, what does a Yid do? He does Hoven Ischak Malay. Here I am officially coming not to be so smart. Yichveis Gornish. Tell me what to do, and I am going to do it. I'm not trying to conquer the world. The morale says that the Sidorim of the Seder is really the the Ebishas Masada and the Ruchnius for our entire for our entire year, in a certain way for our entire life. Because within the context of the Simonim of the Seder is our life. Kadesh, when you're young, you're in your mother's womb. You learn Kala Terakula, and there's a Ner, Dalek, Roshai, there's, there's, there's Kaddish. Then as we're born, Urchatz, right? We go through a thing where kids, where all the parents have to wash us down and diaper us. And then Karpas, right? Begins the, the Nesyonis, Perach, of talking, the difficulty. And then Yachatz, and we have to make difficult decisions in life, decide which way we're going. And then Magid, we start learning Torah. When we learn Torah, Rachza, we're Zoycha to a bigger Madrega of Rechitz. And then we come to Maitzi Matzah, there's Parnasa, and in the Indian of Parnasa comes Maror. It's never easy. It's Bezeya Sapecha, Toychalechem. And then we learn how to do Kairach, we learn how to take, take it all and put it all together the good and the bad, the challenges, the ups and the downs. And we're Zoycha to, to Shulchan Aruch, we're Zoycha to, to use our Parnasa to be. And the finest people and call people, and we're like at the higher levels to understand suffering. We're all doing this for an Eilam Haba, we're Maimin, there are things that are hidden, and we're like to the Indian of Beirach to thank Hashem for a life, for giving us a life if we have Seichel. And then Nirtza goes on, then a Shaman, the Eilam Haba. That the Simonim of the Seder is, is, is Marumis to the whole life of a person. Do we understand it? Do we know? And, and, and not only is it the whole life of a person, which goes through the phases of Kaddish till Nirtza. But even within every year, there are phases of Kaddish, Urchatz, Karpatz, and Yachas, and Magir, and so on. <coughs> and our Bittl, the night of the Seder, is Masader, our Seder. It sets us into place for the entire year. And a lot of it, all it takes, all that Rabbi Hashem wants from us is not to be an Oibrachach. But Rabbi Hashem wants us to knock on the door. Knock on the door and say, Bori Oilam. This is who I am. I should have been better. But this is who I am. 
Let me go where I am. It says the Arachayim HaKadosh, as we see over here in the first piece, Kapitel Dalit, Pasi Beis, Torah says, Nefesh ki sechta. Ubederech remes, says the Arachayim, it says the Arachayim HaKadosh, Yichavin, the Kavona is, Ki litzad she nefesh al Adam. Now, the Arachayim HaKadosh is being meramis here on the Indian, that there are three chalakim to a person's neshama. There is nefesh, ruach, and neshama. And the Mashon, Sechtas Brachas explains it, that uh, Tanya also more or less say the same thing. The, the neshama is actually not within us. Even though we say neshama should have to be tahiri, but most elements of the neshama are above us. It hovers above us. The Rebbe doesn't trust it to come into our guf, so it doesn't get nivga. The nefesh is the chaylik that is that, that is within the guf. That's why it says, nefesh that there are chalakim of the chaylik nefesh as the Nefesh uh, Chaim and others explain, that explain with the guf uh, even afterwards, and Chaim HaKadosh in different places explains it. And the Ruach explains the Masha, it's kind of a modem that goes back and forth between the Neshama of the Nefesh. So the Neshama can't get Nivgam from Chet, but the Nefesh, our Kayach Achiyas down here can. Ubederach remez yichaven ki litzad she Nefesh al Adam, the Nefesh of a person Roshahi. If he turns into a Rasha, Nechseres litzad maisa hara, He's missing. We're missing part of our nefesh. It's not there. Then so is her oven. So in other words, if somebody can, you see that stories with Sadiqim, they looked at someone and they saw the person's chait, right? The Arizal was able to feel a person's pulse. And he could tell him what a virus he did last night. Because part of his nefesh is missing. The, the full nefesh of a person is with the Ramach Evarim, and Shasah Gidim is with the Ramach Mitzvah Saseh, Shasah Gidim Lois Saseh. And if he's chait, part of his nefesh is missing. Do you see part of his nefesh missing? You know, there's certain ways, you know, a person looks whole, they take an MRI, they see this psoriasis in certain parts of his body. In, in the Ruchni Yisdika MRI, you can see part of his nefesh is missing. Now, the, 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 the Bemezid, it's worse. Bemezid, he loses everything. He loses his whole nefesh. Like it says, He has no nefesh. has no nefesh. The passing is letting us know when a person does not a very b'shoigeg, the nefesh goes down a level, goes down down a darga. Ha'emes says the Rechaim Kadosh Leit the Chaser Kulad Elamitzas. You don't lose the whole nefesh when a very b'shoigeg. Well, it's sad machzor kazeh for the amount that's missing. For a very b'shoigeg, who Hashem Amar Hashem ki yavi karm, you bring a karm. Or bezet the scar of her nefesh l'shirasha, the nefesh comes back to its shayrish. The yoyer oyer and it lights up kibetchila the way it was to start with. Avul b'meizit, but if a person doesn't a very b'meizit, shatichaser kula, where you're missing your entire nefesh, lo yoyel to kana sa karm. You can have a plastic surgeon that can stretch the skin, you know. Or, or re, regenerate, re, rejuvenate the skin. But there's nothing there. How do you build on? The carbon is ineffective when it comes to amazing. Because there's no nefesh. Lo yoyel tekana sa carbon. Ki ain't nefesh b'metzias la carbon. There's no nefesh there to fix. Adah she yoshev, the yabral of yoyme kippurim, until yom kippur passes by. The yichya, and then he can live. Al derech emaray, v'ashiva v'chayu. So there is a p'china, where yom kippur, through tshuva, a person gets his nefesh back. There are times of the year, as Fasemes and others explain, and Sadiq explains, there are certain aspects of the nefesh that we may not even get back on Yom Kippur, because many elements of Yom Kippur is directly Tali and Shuvah. But there are certain aspects of our nefesh that come back with Shabbos HaChadosh. Shabbos HaChadosh, the Rabbani Shem is willing to say, a new year, let's start fresh. You come into class, I, I never, all the years that I was teaching, I always, there were, you, know, you get reports on the voice of the previous year, how they're doing, I never wanted to read them. So the Rebbe, the year before, would say, so I worked on this for nothing. I said, no, I read them a few weeks into the year. But I don't want to take away the schachas. I don't want to take away the frishka. When the kid comes into class, it's a brand new class. At least the first hour, they usually behave before they start throwing the suitcases. So in, in that one hour, that frishka I want to have. And that frishka comes with a bittel. And, and that's the bittel of, 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 uh, of Pesach, which we will soon explain there as a Shem's When uh, Rebbe's and Clinton maybe soon to be president or ex-president or email expert or whatever she is um, when she was secretary of state so she made some mistakes she's a human being a human being makes mistakes um, so she went to visit then uh, President Putin who, had a, right, who was yet to be in his gala and uh, he was then just, just took over to become president 
and uh, he wasn't the powerful person that he was. But uh, so she, she, they were very into like slogans, and so she came with pins. The pin was she's going to restart the, you know, the Russian American relationships because it had soured under President Bush. So she gave out a big pin, and it said restart in English, and the equivalent word in Russian. Except, you'll have to pardon my Russian, but whoever translated it didn't translate it correctly. Instead of restart, in Russian it said reload. You know? There's a difference between restarting and reloading. On, on, on Shabbos HaChodesh, we're reloading. It's, it, it, it starts again. Listen, mistakes were mistakes, we're going to go weiter. I have a friend of mine who uh, you know, raises money for Moisdes or does whatever in Yanomar, really a very, very big Erel Anyway, he's going to a bar mitzvah of a very wealthy person. This is a story that happened about 15 years ago. He's going to a bar mitzvah of a very Erel uh, Gevir, whom he wanted to enlist the Bimazaka, uh, this Gevir, with the mitzvah of tzedakah for his Moisdes. So he had bought a set of Mishnabrura or something for the Mitzvah boy, the bigger set, you know, okay, the Deershu set, you know, it has a bunch of chalakim. And he's holding this Mishnabrura. He says, you know, I want to impress him a little bit. So he's thinking about a better, a better one, a better one. Finally, this goes all out. He runs to a Judaica store and buys a leather agoda, a leather agoda, and gold stamps the leather agoda with the boy's name. It wasn't easy because it was only a few hours before the bar mitzvah, and usually it takes them a week or two to do it, especially before Pesach. There's even a bigger backlog, and he is running and gets it done, pays who knows how much, gets it nicely gift wrapped, and brings it to this very, very uh, pumptuous uh, bar mitzvah. I don't know if there's such a word, pumptuous, but you know what I mean. Uh, and he walks in, and as he walks in, the mitzvah boy's there, and he gives him a present, he's so proud of it. Then he sits down by the table, and he sees on the table, in front of everybody, there's like a door prize. You know, sometimes they give out for everyone instead of a bencher. Everyone had a leather uh, Haggadah with the Bermitzvah boy's gold name stamped on it. So, in other words, he gave the Bermitzvah boy a present, which was like the door prize for every single person that was there. He said he felt like digging uh, 10 feet, you know, underneath the thing. He said that, uh, he told him, I don't know if you're going to appreciate your Bermitzvah present. When you open it, you're sure going to laugh. I'll tell you one thing. He says, you know, you buy a Mishnah Bruda, you buy, you know, at least you know, this way, where was he? So I said, how did you deal with it after? He said, he went over and told him the story. And that they had a very good laugh. I said, you're running out of Busha. What am I going to run out of Busha? I did it. This is what happened. It was well intended. Did it with This is what happened. I said, I went over. And I told him, open it up. You're going to laugh. And I made him open it. And of course, they opened it up. And they all started laughing. So this is who I am. I'm not trying to run away from anything. This is who I am. This is my matzah. This is my matzis. Rabbi Shalalam, I appreciate everything you did for me. Help me go weiter. That is the bittle of the night of the Seder. Now, we don't have a karbonus today. So what do we do if somebody sinned b'shaygeg? And the answer is there are karbonus today. It comes in many different ways. There's plenty of agnus nefesh going around. There's plenty of karbonus that are happening within us that are, you know, that could eat our kishkazat. If we want to, we can throw the towel in and say we're upset about this and angry about that and worried about this. And we don't. We say, Rabbi Shalalam, I'll take the hit. This is who I am. Yigang weiter. So I was embarrassed. So I was embarrassed. Not the end of the world. Gefar invite. You know, there's a famous, I heard this from Ratzain worth once. Why did Rabbi Saul Salanter start the Muslim movement? Why did Rabbi Saul Salanter? There's a famous story that uh, there was a, a, a poor person in town. He was the poorest person in town. He was a shoemaker. He was the guy that fixed everyone's heels. And he became rich. Whatever he struck on money, he became rich. And he made this big chasana. And they weren't very happy. Some of the other gavirim in town were not very happy with the new boy on the block. They said, Hagam Shol Benavim, no, we can't have this. So what they did was, in order to embarrass him, in the middle of the chuppah, all the other gavirim took off their shoes, and they began to wave it at him. And he was so embarrassed that he collapsed. So we saw Salant said, if they could do that, he's going to start the Muslim movement. So I heard him but he said, people don't understand. For those guys that waved the shoes, the Muslim movement wouldn't help. They're not learning Muslim so fast. He said, the reason he felt he had to start the Muslim movement was, why did the guy collapse? You were poor your whole life. You're now zaycha to riches. You're zaycha to marry. You have, so they embarrassed you. Okay? It's not, so they embarrassed you. You're not a Why did it hurt you so much that you collapsed? Pick up the pieces and you're going to Get on with it. So there are plenty of karbonis bizmamazeh. If we accept the carbon upon ourselves and we're willing to say who we are, this is where we're going. I was this morning in shul and uh, I was having one like factory mignon. And I was, I was in the hallway 
and I was listening to different people on the uh, on the cell phones. Of course, no one has cell phones or shoes, but only you know outside, you know, in the Polish, you know, in the forum. So I, I, I'm listening. In the back of my mind, I'm hearing by like, Kriya Satira. It's like I don't know. I don't know what I thought it was a shchaydish or something. I thought it was maybe Yom Kippur because it's like benching, staying forever. And I realized like a bunch of bacharim benching gaimel. You know, all the flights coming in out from the bacharim and another benching gaimel, another benching, another benching gaimel. I'm thinking, all oh, these guys, we got to find shidduchim for all these guys and these fathers of girls and fathers of boys and all of this has to. The bunch has to put this whole puzzle together. What works, what doesn't work? How much joy? How much frustration? How much agnus nefesh? How much simcha? Is I'm just thinking about that and I'm listening to this guy screaming on the phone. And he's screaming. I don't know who he's screaming at. I don't know if it was his wife. I don't know if it was his. Now, if he wasn't holding a pot, he would have. He's going, where'd you buy... I'm not saying an exact muscle, but this is more or less what it was. Where'd you buy the eggs? Not in that store. I didn't tell you about his back. Why'd you buy the eggs in that store? Why? He's going... He's, he's having a heart attack because where's his wife or daughter or whoever it was? Whoever is egg buyer bought the eggs. And they overhear another one's conversation. So what are the doctors saying? I think we can get the results of the biopsy before Yom Tov. No? I'd ask you to ask him. And I'm thinking, well, I don't know what this guy is going through. It sounds like he's going through Gehenna. And somebody made a mistake and didn't ask the doctor if they can get rushed the results. He's like, okay, whatever's going to be is going to be. And he's calm. And this guy's upset about his eggs. And he's screaming as hell. Do you understand? I know two people come to Yom Tov in the same way. But our Nisayan is, no one, none of us should be tested. Chas v'sholem, chas v'sholem. But our Nisayan is to take things in as they're coming. <coughs> this, is, this is who I am, the Ben Shalom. This is the matzah. This is who I am. Please pick up the pieces from here and let's, let's move on. Please help me move on. Zakta Rechaim HaKadosh. The next piece, HaKadosh is Elochem. This is Parshish Boy. This week being Parshish HaKadosh. HaKadosh is Elochem. Rosh Chadashim. Rosh Chadashim. Please, this is, I'm, I type over the thing, so please don't assume this is the actual text. It could be mistakes in times of it. Rosh Chadashim. Rishon Hilochem. So, What's the double lashon says the Arachayim Kadosh? Tam Kefal, Rashi Chadashim, and then Rishon. It's Rashi Chadashim, so it's Rishon. Mischav and Loimer ki Chaydesh Zev. This Chaydesh, who Rosh? What does Rosh mean? Pirish Mivcha Shab Chadashim. It's the choice of all the Chadashim. Rosh doesn't always mean first. Rosh means the best. Al Derech Emori, like it says, Psamim Rosh. The Dig the Gloimer Lachem ki Eina Meshubach Umayla Shab Chadashim Shaloyli Yisrael. It's only for Klalis. The Tim's the Sharmu Chazal Benissin Nigalu, and Benissin is seemingly Goyal. Nissan is our month. It's the month we're redeemed. It's the month we're destined to be redeemed. Ki a Chaydish Messuyan, the Chaydish is set aside, the Tidus Yisrael. Ba'alzeb Berishai, who roi Elias Lechem. It's, 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 I guess I carved this out for you. Chi Moinim and Nissan, you count from Nissan. The Tzad Malosai. Oid Yir must be Amre a Chaydish Zev, Ali Amre Chaydish Zev. What's a Chaydish Hazet? To let us know what we know. Shahu Akadish Barhu. Hey is Akadish Barhu. The Siv Zekali Van Vey. Ki ye is a lechem shi galahe. Kamorim Raasa Shiv Chalayam. Now, yes, we're Zaka to Raasa Shiv Chalayam. But before the Raasa Shiv Chalayam came many in the Sianus, and it looked like it was curtains, that the water was caving in on us. You needed an Akshim and Aminadav to go through. During the month of Nisan, we're going to go through the process of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. And the process of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim is not an easy process. But when you're Zaycha, the Rebbe says you're a new person. You may not deserve to be a new person at this given moment. But right now, you're a new person. The famous Maisa by Rabbi Azakal of Slonim, they told him, you know, Moshe the Gavir is really the ex-Gavir. And he doesn't have a red cent in his house. There's no matzah, there's no eggs. And when he asked from the Moschit in front, he was embarrassed. So he's going to come by and just tell him the rub, we know his house is empty. They're going to starve to death. He's embarrassed to ask for food. So the Rav says, everybody will bring him food. He will never take it. I know what to do. So he came by, came by the Rav, and it's the night of the Seder, and everyone's saying, G'dyam tev, G'dyam tev, G'dyam tev. And he comes by, he says, G'dyam tev. He goes, shh, it's so loud. What to say? That's what the Rav wants. G'dyam tev. Come here, come here, come here. What do you say? Shh, I can hear you. What do you want from me? G'dyam tev. You say G'dyam tev? Yeah, G'dyam tev. He said, Yantiv? What's with this rub? Yeah, it was cleaning for Pesach too. I mean, the easy off got to his brain now. Get Yantiv, Yantiv. Okay. After like 10 minutes back and forth, the rub goes, Sorry, Treif. Everything in your house is Chametz. If that's the Shiloh you ask me, everything. You heard the Moshe the Some kind of Shiloh is Everything is Treif. Everything is Treif. Don't, don't worry, I'll bring him matzah. Don't worry, I'll bring this. The rub covered for him. 
didn't look like he didn't have money. It looked like he had everything prepared for Pesach, Yad HaMelech. But it became Treif. So that's how the Rav saved him. And people went and, and, they, and they gave him what he needed. So I was thinking to myself, how many times in life do things become Treif on us? You know? It doesn't work the way we want. We build, we build, and we're building certain hopes for Yom Tif and certain aspirations, whether it's relationships, whether it's Shidduchim, whether it's whatever it is on Yom Tif with children that are out, you're trying to bring them back to the house, and it collapses on us. So maybe when it becomes Treif, it's also the Rabbani Shalom's Chesed that somehow things are rebuilt. We accept the fact, I blew it, it's gone. That gives a Kaddish Baruch we're knocking on the door and saying, it's me, I'm in trouble. That gives an opportunity for HaKadosh Baruch Hu to be mashpia, to give us. We're under normal circumstances. We would, we would not be Zoycha to get. And everyone is set into place. I remember, you know, it's supposed to snow tomorrow. One of the continuing uh, side effects of global warming, that it snows as it gets close to Pesach. But it's supposed to snow tomorrow in the New York area, six inches. That's what they say. Tomorrow could be Purim again. So you know how it is. Everyone jackies for position. You know it's going to snow, and you live on a one. Which side of the block do you want to park on? If you live on a one-way street, everybody knows in the city. You try to park on the left side of the street, because when the plow comes down, the plow angles to the right. So then there's a big pile of snow on the right. You have to dig yourself out. You park on the left side of the street. So I remember in this last two snows, or not here, it goes back a while, coming down my block, and I see a spot on the left side. Ooh. And it was a very tough to get into the spot, real parallel parking, you know. I didn't do it the typical borough park way, which is you zet the guy in back, zet the guy in front, and told me at Maxi, because I'm a rubber. No, I didn't touch the guy. Well, I was able to fit in. I talked the next day, big snow. Middle of, middle of the night, so my wife got a call. My wife said, can, you know, one, one of the kids needs something from a drugstore. Can you drive over? I said, take car service. I take a car. I'm going to lose my spot on the left side. You know? right, in the morning, my kids want to go to school. I should drive them, I'm going to lose my spot on the left side. And then I realized that uh, had I parked on the right side, I would have had my car the whole night. But not because I had my car on the right side, I didn't have my car. Right? So the next day what happens is like a big snow, and everybody on the right digs out. What do they do with the snow that they dig out on the right? They throw it onto the left side. So after two days I come back, and it's all piled up. I can't get out, because everyone from the right side that parked on the wrong side because the plow went to the right side, throws the snow to the other side. So I don't take my car out for a week, okay? Because I, because I was so lucky, I got the left side. So I didn't take my car out for a week. But now I teach Tuesday mornings on Avenue V, you know, all the way down. And I got to get the car out. And I can't get it out. And I'm mamish, I'm trying to get it out, and I can't get it out. Not only that, I'm boxed in. So you can't, like, you know, zoom out because I, I, I'm so boxed in. And then I, 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 people come and they're trying to help me. And I help when people advise you in the snow. It's one of those, when your tires are spinning, you know what it's like people come, they say, give a gas. No, don't give a gas. No, no, put it in neutral. No, no, put it in third gear. No, no, go this way. No, no, go that way. No, turn your, this guy standing in front of the car, he goes, no, turn your wheels like this. What does like this mean? And that guy's pushing from the front and pushing from the back. I knew I was in trouble then. So I, I can't get the car out, you know. All because I found a spot on the right on, 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 I was lucky to find a spot on the left side of the street. I try to get a cab, I can't get a cab. And I have to give this class, and I'm like, I give up. Everyone gives up. And I get into the car, and I'm like, I, I give up. You know? I, I gotta go teach these kids. And I turn on the engine, I just, <clears throat> and for somehow the car slid sideways into the street, and that's nobody was coming down the street. There was no other way to get out of this parking place. I said, what, what happened? How did I get in? You know, all the pushing and all the shoving and all the advice and all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't get the car out. As long as the car slips in. You know, it gets to a certain point where we say, okay, okay, I don't know what's good for me, what's not good for me. I blew it. Rabbani Shalom, I'm in your hands. Oh, you got to that point? That's what Pesach is. Rabbani Shalom, this is who I am. This is my matzif. Pick it up from here. I'm ready to go with it. So there are two things that we say in Aramaic. What are the two things that we say in Aramish, the night of the Agada? We say Kal Chamira in Aramish, and we say Halach um, Ma'anya. Why do we say Kal Chamira in Aramish? So there's a very interesting Mogan Avram. Mogan Avram says, he brings it from the Seder Yain, he goes, it's a bazillion for the bread if we say it in Lashon HaKadosh. You don't want my bread? Bread is the most chash of the Rabbi Hashem gives us. So it's a bazillion to the bread, we don't say it in Lashon HaKadosh. We say it in Aramish. But most people don't know what it means anyway. Why is it a bazillion to the bread? We're fulfilling the mitzvah of, of, of Tashpisu. That's a bazillion to the bread. Zakti machtza shekel. 
Okay, because really there was another way to do it. You, you should have figured out to eat the bread. Leave a kazayis in Mekayim the mitzvah of Tashbisu, and the rest of the bread you should have eaten. Be Mekayim the Balamor's Tashbisu that you eat it. A lot of people are during that mitzvah very much before Pesach. So be Mekayim the Balamor. So, so it's nothing. Kum Tashar Yisascha. And he says, you know why we say Kol Chamira in Aramish? Because Malachim don't understand Aramaic. Fine, okay, so what are you scared of? The Malach, you're, going to, you're going to say your Mavatl, your Chamas, the Malachim will come and take it? What are you scared of? No, because the Malachim will be terribly jealous. Why are the Malachim so terribly jealous? What are the Malachim so terribly jealous of? You know what the Inyan of Bittal is? I mentioned this last night by the Shia. Shalom Kavzavil said, Rabbi El Yurat said it over. You're going to come to Shemayim to 120 years. We're going to say, Rabbi Nishalaylam. And Moshe will say, What did you bring me from that world down there? He's going to say, ah, A love of Hashem. Love of Hashem. He's Malach on a much higher level than you. A uh, fear of Hashem. Fear of Hashem. He's Malach on a much higher level than you. He says, I, Shalom, I broke my rutsin for you. I was in the dumps. I was scared. I was lost. I said, Rabbi I'm in your hands. And all the Malachim go, Wow. Because they can't do that up there. Because Malachim are never lost. Malachim never have struggles in their amunah. Malachim don't have disappointments. Malachim don't have things that looks like it's going my way, looks like going my way, and then boom. Malachim don't have sleepless nights. And a yid that says, I have no chametz, I have nothing. You want me to get rid of it? I have nothing. You want to say everything is treif? Everything is treif. I'm in your hands. Whatever is, is. Shnei dvarim einan b'rshusim shal adam v'asam akasa kilohim b'rshusim. There are two things you have liability for. But you don't have ownership. Chametz and Pesach and a barber shus a rab. Right? So, so well, it's like I had a friend that but he tried to invest, got to zets like anything. At the end, he wound up with the liability and no profit. It's like if there's any reason to start cursing Chas Shalom or get angry, but he said, "This is what Hashem wants me. I tried. This is where I am." So chametz and Pesach every year is in this matzav. As the chametz is not mine, and I'm liable if I have it. Okay, Hashem, whatever you want. I'm putting my life into your hands. I, I'm not here this pe- Last Pesach, I really didn't believe I'll have all these problems this Pesach. I hope next Pesach will be better. My life is in your hands. And that is such rachmei shemayim. When you knock on the door and you say, it was my knapsack, this is who I am. That, that, that generates such a havah. The malachim are so jealous of that. You can't imagine. That we can't even take a chance. We have to say it in Aramaic. We have to say it by Ramish. See the next piece of our Chaim HaKadosh over here. It says, Bavur Zeh. What's the Bavur Zeh? Zeh is 12. Ulay Sharomaz, the Teva Zeh, and the word Zeh, the Shtayim Esrei Mitzvahs. There's 12 Mitzvahs, Harashumim B'Chaga Pesach, that you have a Chaga Pesach. So where does the Chaim HaKadosh get that there are 12 Mitzvahs? Shloy Shadvarim are Pesach, Matzah Maror. Okay, those are three. Hagada is four. The Shivas Yimei Chag. The Kiddush Yom Rishon V'Sheni Harish Taim Esri That's twelve. Kemis Parze Bavir Ze Asa Hashem Li. Who am I? Bavir Ze Asa. The Vahagam points out the Yerachaim Hakadosh Shivas Yimei Achag Leyin Tarig Mitzvahs Enim Nidim L'Shavu Mitzvahs. No one counts every day of Yom Tov as a separate mitzvah, but we can count it as a separate mitzvah. What's the Yerachaim Hakadosh saying over here? It says you see Vayter in the piece. He says the twelve is the twelve Shvatim, the twelve different Drachim in the Yamsif. That we all come from 12 Shvatim. In the base of Migdash, there were 12 different Sha'arim. Every Shevet entered through a different Sha'ar. Through the Yamsif, every Yid saw that he was exactly where he was supposed to be. We are where we are supposed to be in our life. Everything is Bahashgacha Nefla. It's Bahashgacha Pratis. The Banish I'm not asking Kashis. But you put me here, all of my anxieties, all of my hopes, all of my ups and my downs. This is where you want me now at this given moment when I'm this age in this place with these things going on in my life. These are the perceived certainties. These are what I know are uncertainties. So tell me what to do. Give me the instructions. That's what we're saying. With, with, with these and Yanim. Every single day of Yom Tiv is a separate mitzvah. Because every single day of Yom Tiv are different Nisyanis. That's how it is. Families are together. People are together. And the male, all seven days, when it comes to Pesach, trust me, every single day is an Nisyan on its own. Whatever your Nisyan is in your family. And that's why the Yerachayim HaKadosh counts it. For seven completely different mitzvahs. But if we understand that my Nisyanis, my Adam L'chavei, my Adam L'mokim, even my difficult family Nisyanis are all hashgacha, and sometimes it's emphasized a Yom Tiv, so fine, so I can deal with it. You know, I was, remember uh, last year, you walk into the ATM machine in Bank of My Corner. So there's a big sign on one of the ATMs. It says deposits only, no withdrawals. I wanted to take that sign and hang it up in my kitchen. You know? <laughs> deposits only, no withdrawals. Gans Kishmak. You know that story of this... Uh, 
the manager of Chase, of Chase, Chase Manhattan. He walks into the branch on 13th Avenue. He sees one line for men, one line for ladies. He calls the manager. We can't do this. This is discrimination. The manager, what am I doing wrong? He says, you can't have a separate line for men, a separate line for ladies. He goes, I don't have a separate line for men. Why are all the men in one line? Why are the ladies in the other line? He says, no, that's deposits. This is withdrawals. He says, you know, let's see who the ladies are on the withdrawal line, the men are on the deposit line. That's all. <laughs> Now, so, so I walk in, and I'm standing, here's the ATM machine. There's only one ATM functioning ATM machine, because most people are there for withdrawals, not deposits, right? And there's a guy on the phone, dressed very uh, orthodox. There's a bunch of people on the line, and he's like holding his phone, you know? He's like, you know, he's doing his ATM, and he's like schmoozing away. And guys are like, you know, now, I don't know if he was going any slower because he was on the phone, but definitely the perception was that he was going slower. People are like, uh, you know, hello, hello, there's a long line. Don't rush me, you know. And he, don't schmooze on the phone when you know people are behind you. And I was, I was bubbling. I was so angry at this guy. I was telling him, you shem shemai. Look what you're doing. You don't see who's online. What are you doing? You don't have any of the people behind you. I was ready with a whole speech. And he turns around. I'm about to give him the speech. He goes, you're Rabbi Shechter? Yeah. Oh, I love your shiur. Really? Oh. And I told the other people, why are we done people look at schus? Maybe he had to be on the phone to hear how much he has to take out. What do you, who says he went slower because he was on the phone? Suddenly I was his defense attorney. You know, you know how things change? When suddenly you believe that we're part of something. The world is very different. There was once in the bank, and uh, there was a long line. And an old lady walks in. And she's pushing a, you know, a cart. And everyone's saying, the guy, and the teller goes, next, next. She goes, what? <coughs> You're next. What? You're next. There's a bunch of people behind him, business people are out for their lunch hour, they have to run back. She just rolls her card over and the, and the teller goes, Yeah. She goes, um, she starts taking out a check and she, you know, and she goes, Can, can I deposit? Yeah, go, go, let's go move, move. And she's going slow. You have to endorse it. After what? Endorse it. Dorothy? No, Dora. Who's Dorothy? Endorse it. What? You know? She goes, Endorse what? Endorse it. Don't scream at me, you know. Everyone behind is going, lady, lady. If only one guy goes, lady, why don't you let your, your kids come and make the deposit for you? <laughs> That's what one man says, a big chuchel. And she turns around and she says, I, I had one daughter and she just died. I'm all alone. And all this is collective krechts. And one lady walks up next to her and helps her fill out the check and the teller. And everyone's like waiting. And two ladies are walking her to the door and whatever. So I'm saying, Why? Uh, do, we, do we assume that unless there's some personal connection, this guy is in my way, he's like a zhlob in my way, move him out, you know, like a piece of furniture. Why, if we had a munna, that whoever is around us are human beings, and there's a reason that they're there, there's a reason I'm here, there, there's a reason that I'm there. Yesterday is the yard site of uh, Yasser Shail Natalzan. Yasser Shail was the Shail Meshav, was the Rob of Lemberg, was Ish Kaddish. He had a thing, whenever he went to, like, to, to the, they went to Marine Bat, to the baths, he'd always jump off. And come to every uh, well that they pass to make a bracha. So he said when he was a kid, he heard the Balshemta story that scared the living daylights out of him. And since then, his life has changed. What was the Balshemta story that you heard? So he said the Balshemta said that there once was a man he got up there, and they told him he was mizalzel the brachos. They can't let him into Elam Hadam. You have to go to the other place. He didn't want to go. So he said, "Can I come down?" The tikkun. So they, they, they agreed he should come down as a frog. Okay, and. Uh, if his son will make a bracha on the water that's around that frog, that's going to be Masak and his neshama. He said his son is 60 years old, and he wasn't feeling well, and the old medicines failed, and his surgeries failed, and doctors sent him to the other side of the world, to a certain air where he has to breathe. David was Masak and the Sibis, and as he's on his way to this hotel, he goes, I'm so thirsty, I'm so thirsty, stop. And he stops, and he sees the frogs there, but he just picks up some water, and he drinks without a bracha. And says, 60 years he's waiting. And the Abishta was Masav of the Sibis to bring him on the other side of the world and he drinks without a brother. So the Yasushah said, I'm so scared. Every time I pass a, a water, I stop to make a brach. Now, we don't have to get into whose, whose frog is who, which Nisham is on. But to be mindful, never mind frogs, that's already a higher madrig. But a human being that's next to you, is that Pashgach of that, that, that you're with him and you're in a Siyanis and your interconnection with him? Is directly related that the that, that's the, uh, the Chacham and the Rosh and the Tam, the Sheni, the Elisha, whoever they have to you deal with, that is directly connected to them, that where you are in the 12 paths, these 12 mitzvahs represent the 12 Shvatim of Klal Yisrael. 
Zok the Kedusha Slavi, the Yikra al Moshe, Aleph Zeira, a small Aleph. Yevur al Derech Shabiyan, Shabiyan, we explained, the El Moshe. What does it mean, El Moshe? Moshe Rabbeinu said, All El Hashem. Moshe always had a craving to go up to Shemaya. Kisha Adam Oysa Mitzvah, when a person does a mitzvah, Zem Mitzvah Oysa Roishim Lamaila. That mitzvah creates a tangible reality, says the Bradichava. But Zem Oyer Oysa, that's Ma'oyerahim, last is Tamid Ritzain Habayer, to do the Ratzin of Hashem, Bezem Mitzvah. Then in Moshe Rabbeinu Allah Vashalom Ritzain Shalai, his Ratzin was, last is Velalis Tamid of Hashem. So in Mela, it came out where he was. Now he explains, his Ratzin was always to get closer to Hashem. Very nice, but for what reason? The reason he wanted to get closer to Hashem? The reason he wanted to get closer to Hashem was because he wanted to be a vehicle of being Mamshech HaShor HaSashchit at the Kalal Yisrael. And that's the small Aleph. Now, we mentioned, I think, last week, the Masha says, it says, B'derech she'odem roi tzeleilach, melich anoisei. Who's melich anoisei? Lo shenraden. So the Masha says, when we do a mitzvah, we create a malach. And then malach pushes you to do another mitzvah. You do an avera, you create a malach. Then malach pushes you to do another avera. Whatever we do creates tangible realities. And Nevesh Chaim explains, when we come after Shemayim after 120 years, schar mitzvah, mitzvah, schar avei, avei. You're going to see all the malachim. You can't deny it. They're existing. You created these guys. And they're the ones that defend you. They're the ones that reward you. And on the avei side, conversely, they're the ones that punish you and demand punishment. And that's going to be the most frustrating thing. You would, you would be able to connect with our avei and say, you tempted me into it. That's right. Now I'm going to get you for it. And, and, and the, the, the mitzvahs defend us. And that's mitzvah, gerarus mitzvah. Tzchan mitzvah, mitzvah. Taka pushes you. Comes Pesach. There's a Mordechai Yisrael. The Rabbani Shem says, All these malachim that were created by Averis that are driving you to more Averis, stop. You can't cross the boundary. That's it. Kol chamira the chamia goes on the Yitzhahar is all bottle. And that's why the malachim are so angry. That's why we say it in Aramish. The malachim, what do you mean? I was created by him. My job is to drive harder. I'm an Avera Malach. The Chav Chaim says many times, right? An Avera, a Malach that was created by Lashon Hara. I, my job is to prosecute against him. Why are you stopping me? Because the is Chadash. This Yid said, Rabbi Shalom, in your hands, I am moving into your life. It's a different life. I'm moving into a totally different situation. Gemara says that uh, Dam, if someone is on his way to do a Dvar Mitzvah and and he, and he has some little accident, and blood comes out of him. That dam is miratza kedam oil. Let's say a guy wakes up middle of the night. Someone's ringing the bell for tzedakah. I'll go away. He's ringing the bell for tzedakah. Get that guy out of here. Goes, Hello, Mr. Salas. I know who that is. Okay. Washes negamasa. Gets out of bed. Starts running. He's barefoot. And as he's running, his big toe hits the leg of the bed. Ever had that experience? You know. Boom. You know what it means? You can make Kiddush Lavana in your house. You know what I mean? We, stars, the moon. And he's like, ah! Oh! And this guy's, hello, you're up? I'm up now, you know? So he wants to go back into bed. A bunch of this, what you're doing to me? I'm trying to run to help the guy. What are you doing to me? No. Instead, he says, okay, I'm asking the I'm looking at He starts running again, and he doesn't realize there's a lamp pole over there, and that same toe that is still like a light bulb going, you know, in and out, in and out from the first zets, he zets it again with the same toe. Boom! And now, not Kiddush Levon, and now he sees the whole Milky Way and the galaxies, and he sees all the galaxies and everything. And he, 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 he bites his, you know, he mazooked his tongue, and he walks downstairs, opens the door, hello, Mr. So-and-so, are you okay? Yeah, why are you so red? Yeah, how come one toe is so much bigger than the other one? It's like the Tzvardeh and the Tzvayim that keeps getting bigger and bigger every time they got it. So the Gemara says that if someone... Uh, this blood coming out of someone. Gemara says a chulin when he's going for a dvar mitzvah down the roots of kedam oila. So the Gemara says dafka his right toe and dafka the second time that he zetzes it. Why? Think about this. So Rashi says you're running. That's where your full force is. You're running when you zets with that toe. You know what I mean? And especially if you have an ingrown toenail over there. So it says yamtiv. And then you zets the same toe again. So what do most people do? Back into bed. Forget it. Come back a different time. He said, okay, Hashem, okay, obviously you have a reason for this. I'm still going to do the mitzvah. So in Shemayim, that creates such an uproar that Mamish is down the roots of Kedam Oil. And maybe there was a flash in his mind that said, what is Rabbi Hashem doing to me? You know what? It's none of my business. This is who I am. This is what happened. Giganga Vaita. So that's Mechaper. And all his Hirure Alev, like, like Dam, is Mechaper on Hirure Halev. All of the negative forces that were created within him, that were driving him to Avera, are cut short. Because it's Mida connected Mida. 
You were driven now. You should have been driven back into bed. You went against the wave and said, despite my pain, zets after zets, I'm going weiter. The Rabbanu Shalom reverses the Kayach of the Malachim. And that's why the Kol Chamir, which represents a bit on our Yetzirah, is said in Aramish, because the Malachim don't like this. They don't like to be fired from their job. And finally, the last piece here tonight, I think tonight's at Ferris Shlomo's yard said he was the, the, the Damsk Rebbe. I took out excerpts from this piece. It's good I to look inside and see the whole piece because there's a lot more there. But Ferris Shlomo says like this, O Yoimer, it's the second shot. Adam ki yakriv mikem karb. Hanira levayer, you should explain, al pi ha yidua li yoidechein, for those that, that's a, 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 a uh, understanding, for those that understand Kabbalah. Kichol in yone ha mitzvah in maizim toivim. All the in yonim of mitzvah in maizim toivim. She ha adam oisa bi oilem azeh, that a person does in this world, hakal hu shav v'choyzer. It all returns, letikun pegam shal adam erishim. Anytime you stub your toe, it has to do with the begam of other nations. All the Nesiyanis that you're going through, whatever was designed, is because it's your job to pick up on that begam of other nations. Hakoil kolon, it's soyz zakdoshim, at pchinas raglan, all the way down to your toes. And that means the later generations, because it says we were all in the body of other nations. The earlier generations were in his head, and we're ikvus of the Mashiach, we're all the way in the ankle or lower. Kameshikasiv amdu raglav. These are the lowest levels of Adam Arish that still has to be fixed. Bezel, he says, What does it mean, Ezu Derech, right? Which is the Derech which is proper, which is nice? Sheteferes Lai, Mina Adam. If you correct your Pagam, what your mission is in the Pagam of Adam Arish. Teferes Lai, Mina Adam. Pirish Lai, Shiagil Lai, Teferes, Min Adam Arish. Adam Arish is going to praise you. Kishiyavi La Oilam Heelia. We're going to get up there after 120 years. And before we're going to say, God, how did you do that to us? You know what I went to? Adam Rishon calls me over. He goes, you had this problem, right? Yeah. You had this ongoing challenge, right? That's because you have to be massacring this gam of me. Did you do it? He goes, well, I was like angry. I said, it, must, it can't be a God if I'm going through. Wait, he designed it. You, 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 you were supposed to be massacring this gam. I, I, I don't know. And if you can come back to Adam Rishon and you say... Adam, I, I, did, I, I, did, I did the best I could, given what my challenges were. And Adam really loves you for it. The teferis loy mina Adam. Pirish, you give like teferis, you have a lot of covenant in Adam Arishan. Kishiyavi loy lama elian. The shoya loy Adam Arishan. Adam is going to ask you and me. Imasisa, mitzvahs, and masin taibim lamani. Did you do your mitzvahs? Did you rise up to your challenges? Kumuvi beswarm is brought down the swarm. Kichal han the shamais, all the shamais. Oivrim deres derech ma'aras hamachpela. When the shama goes up to Shemayim, we take a detour. No one gets a non-stop flight. Where do you stop? Where's the stopover? In the ma'aras hamachpela. But tzadikim mechayim is Adam Rishon. Adam Rishon wakes up, and we have to say, "Oh, that's why I went through all I had to go through, because this was my inyan, my shlichus on this world." The zeus charai harbe ma'oid ma'oid is Adam, al pipa Oli. If you did what you were supposed to do, it is the letters of Adam. Mina Adam, ashe neshama ba'apai. Rasulami, your ikar avayda mina Adam, ashe neshama ba'apai. We're going to understand one day that there was no sara in our life. There was no sleepless night. There wasn't by design. And by knocking on the door and saying, Rabbi Nishalayim, I don't know why, but this is who I am. I'm the one that made the mistakes. I'm the one that blew it. Help me. Kumavur v'svarim, just like Adam Rishon did tshuva all of his life. And he, and he was betainus, a person that says, I am maimin b'amun ha that everything is vashgach pratis, that my mats of where I am right now, whatever I'm suffering, whatever I'm going through, whatever I'm waiting for, this moment, it could be tomorrow I'll get good news, it could be tomorrow I won't get good news, chas v'shalom. Right now, this moment is vashgach. If I dive in the marav tonight the way I'm supposed to, I'm fixing what I have to fix in the overall pagam of the chet etzadas, then the Kaddish Baruch Hu says, I consider that like you did tshuva, all the years of the tshuva of Adam Rish. Hashem li loyira, I won't be scared, my yasili Adam, what Adam is going to say to me, because I did my best. Pirish pchuna ma, uchuva yasili Adam, ki shnois of hoya mishnois Adam Rish. All of, uh, that was David HaMelech who said this, because his years are from the years of Adam Rish. You know, you, you, the, somebody told, I heard yesterday went to be uh, Menachem Avul by Rav uh, Beer. They said he was a Kapishat Sechas. There, there was a year of a day that said a Mari took a story. He said he was a Bacher. And the Kapishat Rebbe gave him a, a Bar Mitzvah present, a Becher. So it was a nice little Becher. He said, So his father, he took, his father said to him, Don't be a fool. Give it back to the Rebbe. 
Say, Rebbe, what do I get from this now? You gave me a becher. Use it for a year. And then I'm going to take the becher. I have the Rebbe's becher that he made Kiddush on for a year. So this kid goes back and goes, Rebbe, it'll be worth so much more if you use it for a year. So the Rebbe smiled. He used it for a year. And then he gave it to me. Then it was the Rebbe's becher. The Rebbe Shalom gives us our life. He gives us gifts. The Rebbe Shalom, we want to connect with you. Use it together with us. I, I, I want to believe that everything that's happening in my life is Bahashgacha. And suddenly the Rebbe Shalom gives us major discounts. And all the other teachers are waiting for the kid to be suspended. Instead, you say, I knocked on the door and I said, this is who I am. I believe I have to be who I am. I'll do the best given who I am. And the tshuva is so great, the schar is so great, that even the malachim are jealous of You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.